Doubtless, Satanism is quite a loaded term. It's been thrown around rather copiously in all directions, in a blatant disproportion to the graveness of its true meaning. Nevertheless, this analysis will deal precisely with flimsily defined modern Satanism, i.e., with what is broadly subsumed by the term left-hand path. While Satanism proper is an anti-religion, that is, it is a counter-image of existing religion, left-hand path is neither religion nor anti-religion. It is, properly speaking, primarily a metaphysics and, by derivation, an ideology or a political tool for the implementation of ideology. In this respect, the definition of left-hand path used in this analysis will be one proposed by Jakob Christiansen Senhold via Granholm uh, from the, his uh, essay or master's thesis, The Sinister Tradition, to define the most extreme modern left-hand path system order of the nine angles. Quote from Senholt. Left-hand path is based on 1. Individualism 2. Man understood as a psychophysical whole 3. Focus on present moment 4. Deification of the self and 5. Antinomianism which is, as we shall see, where the true Satanism really lies. Because uh, order of the nine angles uh, combines individualism with a very strong sense of history and uh, urge to change the society as a whole, as we shall see. Or, if we take the words of the man behind the system of order of the nine angles, David Myatt, quote, In the left-hand path, there are no rules. There is nothing that is not permitted, nothing that is forbidden or restricted. That is, the left-hand path means the individual takes sole responsibility for their actions and their quest and does not abide by the ethics of mundanes. Now this term mundanes denotes a common man, that means you and me, dear listener, if you are not from the left-hand path. Not inclined to look through causal, quote-unquote, world of appearances. As the system of thought of order of nine angles is taken as an exemplar of left-hand path here, I consider the terms interchangeable. If there's a left-hand path aficionado listening to this and feeling excluded and or offended by this reductionism of mine, so much the better. The extremity and radicalism of order of the nine angles stems from the assumption that above principles should really be practically followed and upheld, i.e. not only held on, as some other satanists would say, quote-unquote, mental level. So we can take it as representative of where left-hand path leads its consequent followers. The reason why I deem it important to analyze the metaphysics of this obscure and fairly fringe ideological system is that its profound and deeply thought out depravity is astonishingly resonant to what I consider to be a merging zeitgeist, namely a radical popular shift towards seemingly anti-establishment while in fact radically anti-social ideologies and patterns of behavior. This shift is surfacing into view now, moving from the fringe into the mainstream and is fueled by the election of Donald Trump for a new American president. All of the sudden, everything seems possible. Fringe can become mainstream, mainstream can become fringe, 
Populism can overpower globalism. Globalism can be reimagined as fringe. Nazism can become woke fashion statement while Christian charity, which is in fact still the basis of Western morality, can in principle turn out to be a butt of a joke. And it's all urbi et orbi. What happens in USA has a license to happen everywhere else in the West. Trump's rise to power was widely perceived as mainstreaming of Vox Populi, while in actual fact it was the mainstreaming of the fringe, of reimagining the establishment in the form of a fringe. By the power of irreverence, trashiness and complete disregard for established rules of political engagement. Moreover, it was perceived by many as nothing less than a miracle. Well, the miracle is commonly considered to be a break in the natural causality uh, affected by the activity of a higher cause. Let us keep in mind these two terms because we'll meet them again during our, our analysis. In this case, however, the situation was perceived differently. Miraculous quote-unquote trumpening was understood by those who deem it such as a working of a causal world shattering the order of the causal, everyday existence. Not the illumination from above, softening the sharp edges of the existence to the point when walking on water is a normal occurrence, but the surfacing of unexplainable coincidences seemingly bending the reality to the will of thousands of young and warped people in the bowels of internet, connecting everything with everything else. Which is in fact the abolishment of causal order and properly a definition of chaos. A causal, namely, denotes chaos, that which cannot revert back to any underlying or pre-existing cause, reason or meaning. The order of the nine angles metaphysics is founded precisely on the idea of crossing the abyss, that is, invoking this A causal chaotic and ultimately destructive quote-unquote origin of all into casual, causal, that is, a relatively ordered temporal universe by acts that are qualified as being quote-unquote sinister. One of those acts is a political sinister dialectic which is in the use, which is the use of satanic principle of antinomianism or adversary as a driving force for destroying stable societal structure. The adversary principle can encompass terrorism, crime, antisocial behavior or indeed injection of antisocial ideas into mainstream society. While order of the nine angles does indeed hold Satan to be a real being, albeit not one confined to causal universe and therefore to a specific intelligible form, the principle of adversary is rather a profoundly deprived moral standpoint which seeks countering anything that can be deemed morally acceptable with its opposite. The purpose of this is both individual and social, so to speak, because left-hand path satanism, satanist seeks to abolish his own quote-unquote causal form, personality in fact, for the sake of invoking the quote-unquote a-causal energies of chaos into his personal life. But he also seeks to affect the broader society in the sense of making way for social change and giving history a certain sinister spin. In the words of David Myatt, writing under his favorite pseudonym Anton Long, quote, Our most fundamental and long-term practical goals are to create an entirely new, more evolved human species and for this new human species to explore and to colonize the star systems of our own and of other galaxies, 
to thus create a dark galactic imperium. Furthermore, we see the breakdown, destruction and the replacement of all existing and mundane societies by a new progressive societies based on our new warrior tribes as a necessary prelude to this galactic aim of ours. End quote. Now, the idea of dark galactic imperium, while indeed as crazy as it sounds, is neither cheesy, sci-fi, nor arbitrary political fantasy, but a specific development of ideas inherited from American post-Nazi icon Francis Parker Yoki, and will expound it in detail in the part 2, or episode 2, of this analysis. For now, the most important thing to note is that Order of the Nine Angles' understanding of individuation makes the true practitioner of this methodical deprivation very elusive and hard to pinpoint, especially in terms of personal history. Thus, the epitome of left-hand path would be the man behind Order of the Nine Angles itself, namely David Myatt. Myatt life, as told from different angles by people who are in fact circa 19% himself writing under pseudonyms, perfectly displays the working of sinister dialectics. A post-Nazi street fighter, political theorist and rabble-rouser, occultist, Benedictine monk, a radical Wahhabist, and I mean radical, even by Wahhabist standards, and now a practitioner of Padhe Mathos, learning compassion through suffering, <laughs> excuse me, dissolving his life in its various and seemingly contradictory forms. The author Jeff Wells of a Rigorous Intuition Blogs sums it up perfectly, quote, In the mid-90s, in an essay entitled Death Before the Sonor, British neo-Nazi political philosopher David Myatt wrote, quote inside the quote, Myatt says, To live and act like an Aryan, that is, with nobility of character, means upholding and living by this principle of death before dishonor. Nothing else is more important, not personal happiness, not personal love, not personal comfort and wealth. This principle expresses the spirit or ethos of the Aryan warrior, and to be Aryan means to live like such a warrior, for however short a time. And Mayat's quote continuing with Jeff's quote. At about the same time, Anton Long, Grand Master of the British-based uh, quote-unquote traditional satanic group, The Order of Nine Angles, wrote, quote of Anton Long now, we uphold human culling as beneficial for both the individual who does the culling, it being a character-building experience, and for our species in general, since calling by its nature, cooling by its nature, removes the worthless and thus improves the stock. Naturally, there are proper ways to choose who is to be called. Each victim is chosen because they have shown themselves to be suitable. They are never chosen at random, as they are never innocent. Now, calling is a fancy schmancy term used by Order of Nine Angles to denote the human sacrifice. End quote of Anton Long, continuing with Jeff. The Jeff pulls in the third quote. Two years ago, in Perspectives of Islam, essay, radical theoretician and Al-Qaeda apologist Abdul Aziz wrote. Quote of Abdul Aziz. The majority of Westerners condemn the martyrdom operations on the basis of the Western perspective using Western criteria, failing to understand the Muslim belief that this life of ours is only a means, a test, and thus failing to understand that many Muslims are willing to give up their own lives in order to do their Islamic duty, trusting, as these Muslims do, in the judgment of Allah. 
our life here on this planet we call Earth is only an opportunity never to return, to gain entry into Jenna and that one of the Janet, Janet, not Jenna, okay. And that one of the best means to gain such entry is to strive and, if necessarily, die in the cause of Allah. Allah. And uh, quote for Abdulaziz. Jeff continues. What do these people have in common? Everything. They, and many more besides, are the same person. Let's call him, for simplicity's sake, David Myatt. But what he is, there is nothing simple about that. End quote. I warmly, uh, there is a link in the, sh in the transcript and I warmly recommend reading uh, Jeff's article, Nine Angles of Separation. It's excellent, really excellent. And not very long. The same or at least analogous, could, as for Mayat, could be said about two other significant figures of contemporary lesbian path, Alexander Dugin and Mayat's one-time correspondent and comrade in Sinister Way, or Sinistra Vivendi, Kerry Bolton of New Zealand. Like Mayat, both men, during the course of their respective careers, exchanged diametrically opposed metaphysical, ethical and political standpoints and moved slowly from the fringe to the center. In Dugin's qu case quite literary as he is a prominent intellectual presence in Russia, whereas Bolton at least established himself as something of traditionalist historian with respectable scholarly resume and declarative, albeit completely false, Christian guise. However, what they all have in common is that they started out as satanists and will more than likely end up as satanists, in the sense we use the term in this analysis. There is a whole plethora of similar but less intellectually gifted personages all around the semi-public sphere of internet-based intellectual life, gathered around a handful of websites like Russian Katehon, American Duginist outpost Open Revolt, and Serbian-based Center for Syncretic Studies, to name a few. They are now also exerting increased influence on pro-Russian flavored alt-media outlets and individuals, displaying the astonishing ability to attract people from the diverse political and ideological spectrum, from the radical left to the radical right, provided, of course, that they are well-read, self-assured, dimwits in search of the return to tradition, original Christianity, true left, or whatever ego trip on which they are running might be. We won't attempt, attempt a comparative study of this strange bunch, because this will be an analysis focused on fundamental ideas they share and investigations into certain and indeed uncertain relations between proponents of ideas must always come second to the depiction of the substance they all share in. Something, unfortunately, conspiracy researchers tend to regularly turn on its head. So the introductory question must be, how does one change effortlessly from avowed Satanist into Christian or Muslim and vice versa? Or how post-Nazi can all of a sudden become radical leftist and vice versa? This question is not important for the reason of investigating some of the persons mentioned before in order to quote-unquote expose them. They expose themselves very well, with quite an exhibitionist intensity, we might add, yet still they are able to sell the personal role they are playing to gullible intellectuals. The really essential thing is that understanding of this peculiar elusiveness, which indicates to a fundamental lack of anything substantial in the respective personalities of these people, provides a unique path into understanding of what left-hand path metaphysics truly is. <coughs> Namely, one is tempted to invoke the phrase about extremes touching, but this kind of psychoanalyzing, apparently very popular among contemporary historians, completely misses the point. 
there is a method to the madness and to paraphrase Nietzsche there's also a touch of madness to every method in this respect David Mayat's life is exemplary and his order of the nine angles system provides us with clear insight how this comes about and more importantly why the key to understand the issue lies in one of the requisite steps in the into initiation into system of sinister way as order of nine angles is alternatively dubbed, dubbed namely playing of insight roles in one of the order of the nine angles manuscripts we are informed that quote what is hidden becomes revealed and made present in our phenomenal world by the magical act that which is revealed is chaos non-being these acts of revealing destroy every day or ego consciousness and as such are the essence of true initiation end quote you have references in transcript the insight role is a part of order of the nine angles initiation dubbed sevenfold way and is supposed to aid its purpose of channeling or as mayat would put it presencing of a causal primarily primarily in the life of practicing left-hand path individual but ultimately in the broader field of civilization he belongs to before we expound on definition and nature of this methodical activity which can in fact be properly described as depersonalization let us illustrate how it appears to observers when put in practice as Mayat is notorious for hiding behind numerous pseudonyms and denying his authorship of many order of the nine angles text and many of his own foul deeds like inciting terrorist acts researchers tend to lose themselves in trying to do him and his ilk justice by wrestling the true identity behind numerous pseudonyms while the very purpose of pseudonyms is in fact precisely to methodically erase any kind of substantial identity here we have a very telling explanation of Mayat's Anton Long, the Order of the Nine, Engels founder pseudonym, whom he of course denies to be him. Quote, the list of Long's, that is Mayat's, influence goes on. But what all these diverse influences reveal is an outpouring of creativity by a single individual. That is, they do seem to reveal an evil genius at work someone assuming diverse roles and diverse persona in order to cause to bring about disruption and change close quote the pseudonyms are in a sense reflections of different assumed personalities as i don't seek to do people like mayat any justice scholarly or otherwise except perhaps to see them hung by the neck until they fart I won't go much in depth of proving how Mayat and Long are one unified nutcase. A scholarly demonstration of this, also in the case of scholarly nutcase Kerry Bolton, who is prone to sue those reckless enough to try to depict which one of his pseudonyms was really him, was already done in a satisfactory way. He wasn't sued, namely, by Sam Holt. The thing of interest here is a metaphysical and anthropological principle that makes this possible an insight role quote an insight role is in effect an extended magical ritual and involves the individual living a certain way and streaming striving for a specific often non-esoteric goal it involves playing a specific role the novice is expected to learn from this experience it is important that the novice identifies with the role to the extent that friends or associates and those the novice is brought into contact with by virtue of that role do not realize the novice is playing a role 
For the duration of the inside roll, the task of that roll should be the main interest occupation of the novice. The, the technique also develops certain skills, some magical, some involving the gaining of satanic judgment and insight, expressed simply, insight roles develop satanic character." End quote. So playing the insight role is necessary to develop a satanic character in the sense we define it at the outset. An individualistic, amoral being serving as a conduit of chaos. Beautiful. The insight role should be something that brings one out of his quote-unquote comfort zone. That is forcing him to apply the antinomian principle of other sari on himself. If person is a love-abiding, closet satanist, he is to become a burglar for a duration of at least six months. If he is a natural, violent lunatic, he should try to join the law enforcement, etc. The goal is to shatter the individuality, learn new skills and gain insight into oneself, which obviously means into one's own nothingness, because the implication here is that deeper layer of the self is something that can be reformed at will, if the will is strong enough. However, as with everything in order of the nine angles system, insight roles have a deeper and more far-reaching aspect designed to influence broader society, i.e., Besides insight roles, meant to develop a depersonalized individual, there are also so-called aeonic insight roles. Quote, the best insight roles are those which aid the sinister dialectic, that is, the deeds done achieve sinister aims as well as enhance the experience of the initiate. In order to determine the aeonic aspect to insight roles, it is necessary to understand the current situation that exists in the world. This is one of dominance by the so-called New World Order, which basically means the domination of the Magian. Now, the term Magian in uh, Mayat's terminology denotes uh, Jewish culture, Jews. This domination over the West and increasingly other countries is essentially that of what is often mystically called Zionism, with the reality that most nations in the West are covertly ruled by Zionist occupation government. ZOG is an uh, abbreviation, and it, this, is, uh, this is used in, in post-Nazi, neo-Nazi circles in the West, all around, Zionist occupation government. One of our aims as an esoteric order is to continue our evolution through creating a higher, more evolved type of human being, a strong, independent, warrior-like individual. This individual is the antithesis of the denizens of the state. If the system is not destroyed, then our evolution will be stifled, and our promise, the greatness, destiny and glories that wait among the cosmos will remain unfulfilled. To destroy the system, action is required by individuals and groups. Thus, any group or individual which is engaged in practical action against the system with the purpose of destroying it and channeling its ideas is interesting from the challenging its ideas is interesting from the point of view of the sinister dialectic and those undertaking an aeonic insight role. Some suggested aeonic insight roles. And here we go. Join or form a covert insurrectionary organization dedicated to national socialism. Beware, never call them Nazis. They get they are very snow, snowflakey about this. Second, undertake the role of assassin, selecting as your offers. Offer is the term that denotes human sacrifice in Mayat's terminology. Those who publicly support or aid ZOG, New World Order, the system, etc. Convert to Islam and aid through words or deeds or both those undertaking jihad against Zionism and New World Order. 
join or form an active anarchist organization or group dedicated to fighting the capitalist system. Join or form a national socialist group or organization and aid that organization and especially aid and propagate historical revisionism. End quote. What is plain to see here is that one is encouraged to join organizations with radically opposite political outlooks. And this is the essence of playing the inside role as a mean to foster a political goal of sinister dialectics, an ability to reduce any kind of consequent moral stance to nothing, which is best achieved through assuming radical political ideology and then exchange it for its likewise radical opposite. In this way, one achieves a twofold end, depersonalization, what Mayat and his followers would call losing the causal form, and sowing confusion, i.e. implementing adversary principle into life of the society. So, for example, Mayat can support and aid both post-Nazis, one of whom he himself is, and Wahhabists, Wahhabists, while totally confusing his detractors who cannot understand that both ins inside roles are simply a means to an end. Presencing of a causal into causal, or, in other words, invoking the chaos. This makes a practitioner of left-hand path, elusive and, above all, confusing. However, confusion dissipates quickly when we observe that at the center of his activities lies destruction a one substantial anti-substance, remaining the same in all changing forms. So we come now before the clear image of left-hand path practitioner. He is the man who can simultaneously utter two statements, the first being, quote, According to the numinous way, the only ethical way in which we can change ourselves and our societies is through an inner individual transformation by developing empathy and striving to live in an ethical and honorable way. There is thus a self-transformation and in a change, a personal and very individual living according to the ethics of the numinous way. That is, there is a compassion, empathy, honor, reason, the cessation of suffering and gradual evolution, development of the individual. This is a personal change and in consequence a very slow social change. The social change arises, for example, when groups of people who follow such a way freely decide to live in a certain manner through, for example, being part of a creating a small community uh, that's like smurfs, satanist smurfs or something, just an interpolation of mine. <laughs> the social change, we continue, the social change also arises when others are inspired by the ethical example you know, of those who are individually and collectively following such a way as the numinous way. Hence, the numinous way is profoundly apolitical and opposed to the use of force and violence in the service of any abstraction or cause, quote-unquote, believing that the better communities, a better world, can only be brought into being by the efforts of ethical individuals who concern themselves only with that which and those whom they personally know and personally interact with. Close quote. This was, I'm sorry, but I can, cannot but ridicule them. This idiot, satanist piece of shit uh, with his pretentious and um, idiotic uh, <laughs> hippie, hippie satanism. He calls Pathe Matos, but he 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 speaks gr uh, real good ancient Greek. He's very very good philologist. <clears throat> so that was one quote, one statement. While the second, taken from the fictional account for instruction of fledgling order of the nine angles aspirants, can be something like this. 
we quote from the short story by David Marat or at least somebody close to him, but probably Marat himself. Now try to compare this hippie crap I just quoted with this. And it, it, it came to pass, uh, it was created probably at the same time. Quote from the story. In every war there are casualties, collateral damage. Anyway, there'll be plenty of time for the area to be cleared. Just remember, those there in that place on that day are flunkies of the repressive, immoral state. Waiting is defeat, and the state isn't simply going to collapse. It's got to be pushed. The capitalists are vulner vulnerable, and one of their weaknesses is the confidence that the money markets require. Then that, get them into a state of fear, and you've got them ready to topple. Keep them wondering where and when we are going to strike next. So Gruyland talked, and Peter the Mundane listened. Talked of the struggle, of Bonanno, of the need to inspire others. And when they parted, hours later, each of their own student rooms, Gruyland knew Peter was primed. A few days, and they were in a rainy London, with the Mundane, that is, this is this guy, Peter the Mundane, carrying a large heavy rucksack. It was a symbolic target near the Bank of England, and they shook hands before Gruylan left, ostensibly to telephone a warning. But the timer, unknown to that mundane, was set off for only fa a few seconds delay, so that he had walked only a few paces away before the bomb exploded. There was a bloody carnage. Bodies, buildings damaged and around among the dead, the dying. Waiting, demonic shapes gathered, unseen by any mortal mundane eye, shapes feeding on upon the pain and suffering, the deaths, transforming the life force, leaking, leaving into new life, their life, as one more portal opened, allowing other shapes to eagerly aggress forth, Hagios ho Baphomet, your Balocraft be done. <laughs> Balocraft be done, I'm sorry. It's funny. Grillan intoned from his well-kept distance and smiled, knowing a reward awaited. And quote, a reward was, just to tell you in advance, and you have in show notes a link to the story of sex with his female, uh, uh, female satanic mentor, who is, I suspect, uh, the manifestation, causal manifestation of Baphomet, because for order of the nine angles, Baphomet is a check. Okay. We continue. So, both of these passages are in all probability written by the same person. Mayat, that is. And are describing the presencing of a causal energies, or rather a burning desire to accomplish things. They are in fact saying the same. So this hippie crap and this terrorist come really horror story, satanist narrative are telling the same thing. Left hand path practitioner is the individual seeking to embody the principle of adversary, confusion, violence, lie and ultimately nothingness. Method of insight roles provides us with a clear demonstration of this. However, as Mayat quite consequentially had put this in the early stages of initiation process, they are also just means to an end. This end is changing the world by reading it of what Order of the Nine Angles considers to be alien influence of Magians, that is Jews, and Nazarene religion, that is Christianity thus opening the gates of chaos and inciting the advent of new aeon and dark galactic imperium. This political goal is a consequence of certain rather profoundly developed depraved metaphysics, a sort of satanic fundamental ontology, I'm referring to Heidegger here and his Zeit, which presupposes a certain subject, authentic, numinous quote-unquote individual just described in the passages above. Now, 
when we are aware of the nature of this subject, that is, when we became able to discern its existential elements, we can proceed to depict the metaphysics of order of nine angles, which will be the purpose of the second part of this series. It is in conclusion of this stage of inquiry good to point out that people like Mayat are quite present in at least internet-mediated public life of alt-media outlets. Kerry Bolton, for instance, is one very good example of this, and his role-playing is to a certain extent even more radical than Mayat's, given his scholarly career, Christian guise, and apparent absence of criminal record. Finally, Alexander Dugin is an archetypal uh, left-hand path individual in every imaginable way, as was already demonstrated to some extent on Kali Tribune. What they all have in common is best expressed in Mayat's Long's own words. Quote, Many non-adepts, and even some adepts, sometimes confuse a tactic, a form, for the essence. That is, they fail to appreciate what is being done, and why it is being done. Sometimes, non-adepts even mistake an insight role, undertaken by an initiate, or even an adept, for the views, or whatever of that initiate or adept, and thus castigate the individual, a failure to go beyond appearance and forms to the sinister essence. One mark of a genuine adept is their ability to see beyond such forms, such tactics, to the essence, to the sinister magic often at work in such things. Another mark of a true adept, and those beyond, <laughs> as has been written many times, is the ability to appear as different things, to be a shapeshifter, a chameleon, end quote. I must be a true adept because I see a piece of shit in, in, in all of these persons. The same crap, the same third, so I am at least half adept. I am not shapeshifter, but I see through this. And it, I, I really don't think that it's a great feat to see through this. Really don't. One only has to recall diverse following of Alexander Dugin to appreciate Mayat's point about causal form and sinister essence and their dichotomy. Or, for instance, compare Kerry Bolton 1.0 with Kerry Bolton 2.0, you have the links in the show notes, in the transcript, to understand what I mean. When Bolton was Satanist and when Bolton was Christian. <laughs> One of the dangers in dealing with these characters lies precisely in, a, in attempts to disentangle their true identities, whereas in actual fact they have none, or are at least striving to get themselves to that point. This establishment of difference of form and essence, where essence in fact points to the utmost depth of being insubstantial, makes way for approaching left-hand path metaphysics proper. In the next episode we'll do just that, based on an analysis of one Mayat's essay devoted to Martin Heidegger and his understanding of being and logos. As we shall see by depicting the idea of galactic imperium, Aeons, Vindex, and most importantly, a causal realm, Order of the Nine Angles is pretty much a blueprint for many a left hand path prophet, one of the most successful nowadays being the beacon of mostly Anglo American traditionalist dupes, Alexander Dugin. The fringe is moving to the center. That is new archetype of politics. The left-hand path is an ultimate fringe, darkness at the edge of global cosmopolis. Therefore, if we want to get a grip about what's going on with the new shifts in public consciousness, which is moving in the direction of global populism, we are obliged to study its ideas and methods. The principle of everything is possible. A principle of chaos, that is, sways the public mind. It is, above all, a principle the left-hand path satanism endeavors to present. Just what it means to present chaos with its dark gods will be a subject to the next episodes in the series.